Hello everyone, so here we are back with a final look on this really cool 1985 British Telecom special range Mickey Mouse phone with the push buttons. Um, now, the later versions were push button. The versions from the late 70s, about 78, up until the early 80s, about 1981, um, those were rotary dial and they had a trim phone ringer, whereas these push button versions from about 82 to about 87 had um, a bell ringer and push buttons but they weren't touch tone these phones they were loop disconnect which means they used pulse or the method of rotary dialing to dial out um, and that's because British exchanges in the early 80s weren't equipped for the digital tones um, only certain um, PBX's um, were able to handle the touch tones which is why they had the 782 uh, touch tone desk phones in the early 80s. But anyway, that's going off track a little bit. Um, so this phone's been fully restored and um, polished, and I think it's come up really well. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my previous video, but of the first look of this phone, but I do actually have one of these Mickey Mouse phones already. It's actually identical to this. The only difference is, with it being in a slightly earlier version from 83, um, whereas this is 85, um, it has a hardwired handset card, whereas this later version has a RJ10 modular ended handset card. Um, so that's just a little bit of a difference. Another thing that I noticed was the handset on this later Mickey Mouse phone actually comes apart in two pieces. So you have the back piece here, and then this part in the that you grip there on the back side. That comes off for some reason, I don't know why but it doesn't do that on the earlier versions. But anyway, I'm think, I think it's um, cleaned up really well. So um, I'll just give you a bit of a tour around the phone. So we'll start with the handset, because that's easiest. So it's just a Western Electric type handset. And you have your receiver in there. That's dated 85, so that's original. That's a GPO type receiver, that is. And you have the transmitter, which is a carbon type. And that's a Western Electric sort of transmitter. And you have the contacts in there. So they were replaceable very easily on older phones like this, should they go wrong, unlike newer phones. Um, so there's the handset card, it's just like a standard length. We didn't really have a um, a super long handset card like they did in the US back in the day. I mean, you could buy them, but they didn't come as standard with telephones. So, Mickey himself has polished up really well, you can see. I think it's come out really nice. Got up, I've got rid of a load of the dirt and stuff, and any areas that the, the black had come off, I'd filled it back in with a permanent marker, so I think it's. I think it looks really good. There doesn't seem to be any discoloration on the phone at all. The only discoloration I found was on the handset. It seems a little bit darker than it should be, but you know it's, it's over thirty years old. So what can we expect? So the artificial wood plinth there. That's um, it's just plastic, and it's supposed to simulate. Some sort of oak, I think. Mahogany, some, something like that. But I'll just take the handset off and I can show you underneath the phone. Turn it the right way up. So there we have the, the rating sticker there. So it says character telephone, TSR 8021A. Now the TSR on the model number stands for telephone special range, if anyone was curious. So it says TS FGB 85 slash 1 made in the UK and it has a one Ren ringer. Ren stands for ringing equivalence number if anyone was curious or ringer equivalence number however you want to say that. So we have the hardwired line card there, the modular handset card. I'm not sure why they did that there but it's just the way it is. So we have the serial number if that shows up and um, the approved for connection to British telecommunications uh, systems. Of course, they had to have stickers up like that in the 80s because um, with the new BT plugs that were introduced, 
um, you could connect anything to the phone line so it was illegal if you didn't have an approved sticker like that on the bottom of your telephone because of course in the 80s you could buy your phone you didn't have to rent it anymore anyway there's a, a general look at the base we have the feet still intact if we can see those there there's the other one there we go marvellous and the bell is situated on this side on this phone the earlier versions that had the dial um, that weren't push button like this um, they had a trim phone ringer and um, they didn't have a bell which is another interesting point to make so there's the keypad as I said it's a uh, pulse dialing keypad it's got a nice sound to the keys and a good quality feel to the phone M stands for memory redial <laughs> it's not a direct call to Mickey Mouse if anyone was wondering have the British Telecom logo there and the number card there it says 100 for the operator 999 for emergency and of course Mickey's arm um, serves as the switch hook now one other, one other thing I'd show, I want to show you is the uh, handset card as you can see it's very clean now it is the original one it was filthy I don't know if you remember it from the first look video but it was quite dirty and we have the uh, the BT plug intact there so that's cool okay right, let's pop him back there we go so I think that's everything is everything sorry everything I can show you on this telephone um, so we'll get it plugged in and uh, we'll start with the demonstrations Alright, so Mickey's plugged in and ready to go. So of course I'll start with my usual outgoing call demonstration and then I'll show you the ringer. Now, as I said, this phone is pulse, so you know it's not touch tone despite it being push button. Um, so after I finish dialing out, you will continue to hear the pulses in the receiver. So, you know, it gives you an idea of how long it took to dial out with a pulse press button phone. So anyway, here goes. There's the dial tone. So there we go, as you can hear it does take a while to connect and of course that's due to the fact that back when this phone was produced um, many domestic subscribers didn't have access to the new digital system, System X it was called and um, people were still connected to Strouger exchanges so couldn't have a touch tone phone but due to the popularity of films and you know other sorts of advertising, magazines, etc. Um, the demand for push button phones was coming in, so this was the compromise basically. But anyway, I'll call one other number. Dial tone again. So, there was no mistaking what that was. Um, what phone that was, I should say. Um, so, I guess I can show you last number redial. You press M, and it continues to pulse again. As it's dialing out. So, there you go. So finally, I'll show you a ringing demonstration, but before I do, I think I'll just adjust the camera slightly and we'll get a better angle. So here's what the ringer sounds like.
So there we go. And as you can hear, it's a little bit clangy, um, but it's definitely a bell. So anyway, just a bit different. Um, there's the British Telecom Special Range push button Mickey Mouse telephone. Now, for anyone interested in this type of phone, I do have another video of one of these coming, but it's a USA version, the touch tone version. And uh, we'll be taking a first look at that and then a final look after I've restored it. All the usual gubbins you've ex come to expect from me. But anyway, that's another video planned. So for this one, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.